Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Theory Tuition series where I'm working with you step by step through each of the ABRSM theory grades. There are lots of resources available to help you on my website. If you visit SharonBill.com, you'll find some free PDF information sheets and you can download these in US letter or A4 and they accompany each step of this series. You can find a page there with links to all of my YouTube video tutorials and you can also find information about the books that I have available. I've written an exam technique guidebook, how to take your ABRSM music theory exam. It's full of tips and techniques on how to best prepare for your exam and also how to make the best use of your time when you're working through your paper on exam day. So if you go to SharonBill.com you'll find it's all there. If you can give me a like that would be really super and please do subscribe to my channel to keep updated, there's lots more to come. And now we're going to continue with the Grade 2 2014 papers, we're going to make a start on paper B. So if you turn with me to page 6 and we can start with question 1. So I always recommend that you use a pencil, a nice sharp pencil, so that your answers are clear and neat, otherwise you might lose some marks. I use a mechanical pencil just so it stays sharp. You will also need an eraser and uh, a ruler would be helpful too. And so uh, I always suggest as well that you work through each paper on your own first of all, or maybe just listen to a little bit of the um, explanation and then try it on your own. Uh, so I'm hoping that you've had a crack at these and now we'll look through these answers together. So question one asks us to add missing bar line to these two melodies. So there are two separate time signatures, so we're going to have to count to different values twice. Very helpfully, they've given us the first bar line in each case. So here we're counting in three quarter notes, three crotchet beats per bar. So whatever adds up to that, we need to put a bar line. So we've got one beat here, a dot after the note makes it half as long again, so that's one and a half. We've got a quaver or an eighth note here, that's worth half of a crotchet beat, so that's half of a beat. And then we've got two quavers here, which are half a beat each, so they give us one. So we've got one and a half, two, three. And so we just need to keep counting to three crotchet beats, three quarter notes. So we've got one beat here, the dot after the note makes it half as long again, so half of one is a half, so we've got one and a half. Now these semiquavers or sixteenth notes are worth a quarter, of a crotchet beat. So we've got a quarter and a quarter which gives us a half. Now if it is that you get stuck with your maths, I find it easier just to visualise. There's my crotchet beat and I'll divide that into halves and quarters. And so we can see that we've got a quarter of a beat here and a quarter of a beat here. That gives us a half and we've already got a half a beat here. And so we can see there that gives us one beat so we've got one beat here one beat with this combination of the dot and the semis so that now makes two and then we've got one beat here in this crotchet beat this quarter note so that makes three and so there's our bar line just underneath that tie then we've got a quaver and a quaver two eighth notes give us a crotchet that's one beat there's a crotchet and then we've got a quaver here, that's worth a half. The dot after the note makes it half as long again, so that half of a half is a quarter of a beat. And then we've got a quarter of a beat here for the semi-quaver. So all together that gives us one beat. And also we know that these are grouped to match the unit note here, so we can see that we've got one beat here and one beat here, that's the rules of beaming. So one, two, three, there's our bar line. But again, if you get confused with those half beats and quarter beats, again, just give yourself a visual clue. So let's divide that into quarters. So we've got a half a beat here with that quaver. The dot after a note is half as much again. So there's a quarter of a beat, and then we've got a quarter of a beat here in the semi-quaver, and we can see that that's our one beat altogether. So here we've got a minim, which is worth two crotchets, two quarter notes. So we've got two beats here, and then we've got a crotchet beat rest, or a quarter note rest, so there's our one, two, three, 
double bar line so that matches up at the end so we know we've not gone wrong there. So that's that one completed. Now let's have a look at this one. So this, this time we're counting in units of a minim or a half note. So we've got four minims per bar, four half notes per bar. So whatever adds up to the combination of that. And you can see this first bar, one, two, three, four minim beats bar line. So we've got one, two, and then this whole note, this uh, semi brief can be divided into two minim beats, two half notes. So one, two, three, four, that can go there. And then here this divides into two minim beats or two half notes. One, two, three, four. So that's our next one. We're counting a minim beats here or half notes. One, two, three, four. That's that one. And then here we've just got a little bit of careful adding up to do. So let's start at the back of the bar here where it's a little bit easier. So this divides into two half notes or two minim beats. One, two. We've got one minim beat here, and then we've got half as much again, which is a crotchet or a quarter note, and we've got another crotchet here, and those two together will give us a minim beat. So you can see we've got one and a half minim beats plus another half of a minim beat, a quarter note. That gives us two three, four, and we can see that that adds up correctly towards the end. So that's that one completed. Now the question two, this is a, the first example of where the layout of the exam paper has changed and from 2018 onwards, there is no longer a, a question that asks us to write a four bar rhythm. So we can just skip that. That's no longer on the paper from 2018 onwards. However, the rest of the paper provides a really, really valuable revision resource. So just because we're not answering that question, it doesn't matter. It's still really helpful to go over these past papers uh, just for some revision and preparation for your exam. So we can skip that one and we can crack straight on to question three. So then, question three asks us, to rewrite these bass notes. So we've given some notes in the bass clef and we need to rewrite them into the treble clef but keeping the pitch the same so we've got to be very careful that we don't end up jumping octaves. They've given us the first answer as an example which is helpful of them. Now the, the best way of approaching this so you don't end up jumping octaves and getting your pitch wrong is to always relate back to middle C. And so we can see here's middle C at the top of the bass, the bottom of the treble, of course it's sharpened, but never mind, the principle remains. So there's middle C in the bass, there's middle C in the treble. So if we keep referring to that point, we shouldn't go far wrong. So for example here, this is middle C, and we're C, B, A, one, two, three, below that. So if we have middle C, B is the space, A is the line, and so we know we're in the right pitch there, we've not jumped octaves, because if we write the A here, that's not correct because we're in the wrong octave. So here is middle C. So we're gonna begin above middle C. So here's middle C just for a reference point. C, D, E, F, one, two, three, four. C, D, E, F, four steps up from middle C. So we don't need this line, that was just a reference point. And then we just sharpen it. So there's our F sharp in the correct pitch. Now here, we are below middle C. So starting in the bass clef, middle C is here. C, B, A, G, one, two, three, four. So below middle C, C, B, a, G, and you can see that we're one note from this one here, so that we can just double check from a previous point. So there we go. So now here is middle C in the bass clef, and we're one step above that. So here is middle C in the treble clef, just as a reference point. One above that takes us to D here, and that's that. So that's that question completed, apart from question B, in which major key are all these notes found? So we need to just look at what clues we've got. We've got a C sharp here, 
and we've got an F sharp here and so which major key has got F sharps and C sharps and so if you've done your revision for your uh, key signatures you will know that that's D major. There we go, so that's that question completed. We'll look at the next question in the next video. I do hope that's been helpful to you. I hope this is um, helping you to get to grips with this topic. If you can give me a like, that would be really super. Please do subscribe to my channel to keep updated. Please also do visit SharonBill.com and make use of all of the resource and information that's available to help you there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.